everybody. Welcome back to Great Northwest Weaponry. This is Thomas, and today we are taking a look at the Mauser Model 1914, another 32 ACP. Haven't looked at a 32 in a while, actually, but we've established that some of my favorite guns are the old World War I and II pocket pistols. And this is actually the first World War I era Imperial German pistol that we've looked at on the channel. This will be part of kind of a two-part uh, video because we'll be following this up shortly with a look at the Mauser Model 1914, as I have one of those as well, and it is a direct evolution from what you see before you here. Uh, really, there's very few differences. But we're gonna probably do history mostly in this video, and then look at the evolution mostly in the follow-up video, probably 10 days from now, and I'll probably post something in between. I'm gonna be posting videos kind of rapid fire every five or six days for the next four or five videos, just because I've got a lot of a uh, lot of new content that I want to show you guys. But for now, let's go and talk about the history of the Mauser Model 1914. In 1909, Paul Mauser wanted to develop a uniquely Mauser line of pistols, both uh, larger 9mm and smaller caliber pistols. And to accomplish this, he hired Joseph Nickel, who we've discussed before. It's either Joseph Nickel or Nickel. I'm not 100% uh, certain on pronunciation, but this is the same guy that would be hired by Zbrzovka Breno to create the CZ-27 and CZ-24 uh, pistols. And you can see influences in the, in the design from these Mauser pistols that he made earlier. Um, the early, the very earliest design of this kind that can be found is the Model 1909 in 9mm. Uh, I don't know an awful lot about the 1909, except for that it was a failure. The gun never took off. It wasn't a particularly good mechanism for a larger caliber. And so it was downsized dramatically to the Model 1910, which is in essence a 1914, but smaller and chambered for 25 ACP. Uh, I've actually seen a, uh, a Model 1910 uh, at the Warfront, where I've actually picked up this Model 1914 as well. Um, I'm probably going to mention that again at some point later in the video. They have a lot of Mauser pocket pistols currently. So you got the 1910. The 1910 is mostly going to be found in civilian use. Uh, it never really took off for any military or uh, police contracts, but it was out there. The, the new uniquely Mauser pistol has, was officially taking off. And in 1914, just shortly before World War I started, the larger Model 1914 was released. The earliest variants you'll see, there's six variants, and the sixth variant is what will often be called the Model 1914-34 or just a 1934. We'll look at that separately uh, in a separate video, uh, as we either have already mentioned or are going to end mention later. But... Uh, there are differences between all the variants. Um, a lot of them are pretty uh, archaic, I guess. Um, a lot of it will involve the legend on the left panel of the gun right here. Um, also, little details like the milled groove there. But in the earlier variants, a quick thing you can identify is there will be a, a kind of a sloped cutout starting right about here on the slide and going all the way to where the barrel attaches, where it is uh, milled down. And that goes away uh, somewhere in the middle of the second variant of pistol. You also see some first and second variant pistols with slightly longer barrels and different sight positioning. You'll mostly be seeing the same kinds of sights. For details on, uh, super fine details on identifying your Model 1914 or 34, uh, I actually have an article to recommend. It was from uh, Unblinking Eye, did an article on the whole Mauser line of pistols that is a great article for uh, if you're wanting to identify which model yours is specifically, because there are very fine details. I know that this is a third variant. Uh, there's a quick way to identify this is the lack of a Mauser banner anywhere on the gun. You will see Mauser printed in the legend, but earlier first and second variants have the Mauser banner actually usually right about there, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Post-war variants, a lot of times the pocket on this side that I mentioned, this little milled spot will be absent. And on earlier variants, sometimes there, there'll be markings inside there. So again, there's, there's a lot of 
primary variants and sub variants. You've got six primary variants and then multiple sub variants, including different barrel lengths, different marking and sight configurations. There's a lot of different little details to look at here, but the 1914 is a really interesting pistol. This actually was one of the more common 32s in the hands of Imperial German soldiers in World War I. Uh, also was very popular among police, but luckily for uh, for the Germans and uh, just for Mauser in general, that the gun was never adopted officially by the military. It was not the official sidearm. And so at the Treaty of Versailles, the gun was never uh, taken. It, it was allowed to stay in Germany. So most of these stuck around. And a lot of, in a lot of cases, they'd be used all the way up until World War II in one variant or another. Some were actually made specifically for uh, the Kriegsmarines. Uh, we'll talk about that a little more when we do the video on the Model 1934. But it's, it's a really cool gun. It's surprisingly ergonomic, though the 34 improves even further on the ergonomics of the gun. Uh, takedown is really strange. We're gonna be looking at that here in a second. One more thing, uh, on the third variant, you'll see the manner in which the caliber is printed on the side, the Mauser-765. Anything from the third variant on will have some variation of the Mauser-765 printed on the side. But other little details change quite a lot. Um, stuff that happened post-World War I, again, we'll probably be uh, covering a little bit more in the Model 1934 video. So these are really going to run tandem to each other, mostly going over the earlier, earlier variants here with the multiple references I've already made to later variants, but this is where it would end for up to World War I. You see mostly this variant being used, made, um, even here references to 32s being used, um, in, in a lot of books written by German soldiers in World War I. An example, uh, uh, Storm of Steel by Ernst Junger, uh, a lot of times he mentions in his writings of when he was sent out on patrols that he would have his revolver and his 32, and you can almost safely assume that it was probably one of these was his 32, where the revolver would have actually been his issued weapon, 32 would have been a backup. Um, though there all are other 32s that Germany was using at the time, it's not a 100% safe bet that it was a Mauser 32, as he never clarifies in the book to the best of my recollection. But interesting to think that this is possibly the variant that Ernst Younger was carrying when out on missions. Um, again, I'm, I've been really fascinated with these. I'm The first time I ever saw one, the first one I got was actually my 1934. I did not really know what I was looking at. I just went, that is the weirdest, maybe ugliest pistol I've seen. And I kind of love it for that. They're really bizarre. And I'm excited to show you guys how to take this thing apart. So let's go ahead and go to the tabletop view and take a look at that. Before we actually start taking this thing apart, a couple of unique features to note that we haven't mentioned yet. This safety is like shockingly ergonomic for the times, you know, 1910, 1914, this uh, was the same safety used on the 1910. And it's, it's a very advanced design and it's actually identical to what you'll see on the CZ 24 and 27, again, as a commonality between uh, guns made by Joseph Nickel or designed by Joseph Nickel at least. So, First thing you're going to want to do to disassemble the 1914 is lock it open. And I should note, the gun does lock on empty, but removing the mag is not how you're going to drop the gun, or drop the slide. And the slide uh, can drop on a empty mag when you reinsert the mag. That is actually the only way to drop the slide, but the gun will not fire without a mag inside. So... We're going to lock the gun open. We don't need the mag to lock it open. That's actually counter counterintuitive. Lock it open. Got a little button right there. You're going to depress that with your thumb and then rotate this piece sideways. And this is uh, your, uh, uh, like a retaining rod. So you're just going to pull it out. Very simple. And then after you do that, that's what's holding the barrel in place. And the barrel just lifts straight out of the top. Very simple. Now, 
we're going to need to reinsert the magazine. Let the slide fall forward all the way. You want it to go past here. Remove the magazine once more, and now you can pull the slide off. Then you've got your um, guide rod and recoil spring. And you can see right here, the striker, uh, I'm just going to use a, this right here retaining piece to look at this. The striker can very easily be lifted off of its seat when, uh, when you've taken it down to this point. I'm not going to bother with that because it has a tendency to go flying and then be very annoying to put back on, but it's, it's not difficult. Uh, this is a striker fired gun. It's actually a very early striker fired design, but you've also got this side plate right here that you can simply lift. You want to kind of rotate that end away and it just pops right off. You've got these little, uh, milled pieces that go inside of which is what keeps it in place and you can see all the internal workings uh, and if anything in here is out of place you know have fun <laughs> we're not getting that deep but to put it all back together you're going to want to go in this side first and then just seat it back down all the way properly and flush if it is not flush you're going to have a pain putting everything back together. Now, make sure to put your guide rod and recoil spring back in. At this point, we can put the slide back on, line up your recoil spring inside this, uh, this extent there, pull it all the way back, locked open. Now I can drop the barrel back in and this retaining rod here and it can just slide back in place and then it stops once you pass the release button. Put your mag back in to drop the slide and you're good to go. Like I said, I'm going to plug this, uh, this article again. If you want to figure out all the different variants of, uh, how the legend on the left side is written and, uh, little details about finding out exactly which model you have, unblinking eye has a fantastic article on this. Um, I, I used it pretty extensively in my research, uh, as well as a few others, but it definitely was the most concise look at figuring out a date on one of these. I don't have an exact on this one. It, it is somewhere in uh, middle of World War I manufacture time, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it at a soft, like, 1915-16, maybe early 1916 uh, possibly early 1917. I, I really could be far off, but most of these that were made were made in the third variant. This is the most common variant, and they were produced all through the First World War in exactly this configuration here. Let's go ahead and put a few more rounds through this thing and show you guys how it works on the range. Loading these Mauser pocket pistols is a piece of cake. It's very standard fare. You just got your magazine. Uh, you've got a heel magazine release. So you're gonna push that back with the mag and then just slide it all the way in. Your safety on these is on the side here. That's safe, that's fire. So this button releases the latch. Uh, these really were a pretty ahead of their time design. Uh, in, in some ways, in some ways they're very weird. This is one of the weirdest looking pistols that we've looked at so far. But let's go ahead and put another mag through it. These are eight round mags. I believe I've got this one fully loaded to eight. Locks open on empty. The only way to drop the slide as we actually looked at when we did the disassembly is you're going to pull the mag out and put the mag back in. The insertion of the mag is actually what drops the slide. So yeah, this is just a really cool gun. I got this one a while back from my friends at the Warfront, as I believe we already mentioned. Uh, they've got quite a few uh, Mauser pocket pistols there actually. Uh, speaking of the Model 1934 that we'll be following this video up with, they've got a couple of Kriegsmarine models of the 1934 presently as well as the 1910 that we talked about when we did the, uh, uh, the the history talk on this gun, the gun that directly preceded this one in 25 ACP. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, about five or six days from now, we'll be posting something different. 
and then the immediate follow-up to this video will be the look at the model 1934 in about 10 days so hope you all enjoyed it's been thomas of great northwest weaponry and i will see you next time